Greetings from my ki uh, kitchen pool pit. My name is Karen Clymer here in Southwest Oklahoma, and we're going to talk about Jesus like we do every Friday. This is the last day of September 20, uh, September, this is September 30, 2022, the very last day of the month. So we are so happy we can be here to work for the Lord, to honor and bless his holy name. And the title of our message today is Refuse to Sit soak and sour and i thought of something another word would work in there refuse to sit soak sulk and sour we just want to be joyful people working for the lord and yes silver citizens we get to do that in fact we just have almost like a mandate uh, from our uh, from our lord and savior jesus christ uh, through titus that he had him write these words to us that the older were to teach the younger and it's a high calling we get to do that. We get to be examples of believers in our words and our deeds. We should be like that all the time. But even people say, well, you know, now, you know, in my old age, we need to watch out like a friend of ours. She wrote, began to take notes down. She wanted to beware, she said, of the snares of old age. She had seen people in their later years. And she was like in her 50s when she began to notice some people had been so strong for the Lord and how then they begin to change and really it was heartbreaking some of the things she saw. So she wanted to be, be uh, beware and to be aware of the things she needed to do to keep pleasing the Lord. That's what we want to do. We never age out. We get to keep working for the Lord. All right, let's keep going here. We need to, we need to uh, knead this bread for 10 minutes and I need to get started here. All right, so let's go on. Now I want to make sure this bread is alive, so I'm going to check that out first thing. All right, the, the title, as I said, is Refuse to Sit, Soak, and Sour, and we have for our text today is Cast Your Bread Upon the Water. And in the King James Version, it says on the surface of the water, it says on cast your, cast your bread on the water. I'm going to read it here from the New American Standard 1995, Cast Your Bread on the surface of the waters, for you will find it after many days. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 1. Oh, that is a scripture that, you know, kind of baffled me as a kid. I mean, wonder what is he talking about, you know, and cast your bread. And I was thinking about soggy bread. Well, that's not what it's talking about. And it's talking about the seed you would cast on the water. You think, well, why would you do that? All right, well, I'll tell you what. It's just a lot that we find out that it does. Actually, uh, as they say, around in the Nile, they would cast their seed on the water, and then it would soak down, and then at, when, before it was all over with, you had a beautiful, beautiful crop. So, uh, so they cast your bread on the water, you'll find it after many days. So what would happen? You know, it would spring up after many days. And I want to talk about here something about refuse to sit soak and sour. As silver citizens, we need to beware, as I said, we need to be very confident that we can do work for God, but we need to not be cocky. We need to be very careful. And But I notice it's something where you know they say, say, well, uh, we need to watch the words that we say. We need to watch what we do. They'll feel like they can't work for God and they'll give all these reasons why they can't. Uh, but I wanna to talk to you about this. There is a law, I am told, that in the jungle, there is a law and that the animals, they teach their, I've heard like the monkeys and all, uh, they teach them never look into the eyes of a snake. Never look into the eyes of a snake. Because what happens, this monkey may be sitting up on a limb and here will be this big old tall snake. Snake will be standing up there, you know, it's kind of rare up his head like it would do and it starts moving, just swaying back and forth. Well, what will happen is that monkey will get, become mesmerized by that and they just start next thing and they're start to fall asleep. And they, they have become, uh, it's, it's a very dangerous, they're very vulnerable. And how that they have been taught, you know, by their, the monkey parents have taught them never look into the eyes of a snake. It's the law of the jungle. And so they, when the story you, we used to tell when we were in child evangelism was Toto the monkey. He didn't pay attention when he was warned. And here the snake was there and his dawdling in here was going moving, just swaying back and forth. Well, what happened? Well, the, the Toto the monkey uh, was looking at that and he was beginning to start to sway and he got sleepy, he fell off the limb. And he fell off and what happened? The snake ate him. Well, I thought, you know, about the old serpent in the, in the Garden of Eden. And I thought, you know, we still have a snake around, uh, you know. We have the serpent that is out to deceive us and out to destroy. Do not look into the eyes of the serpent. 
Do not listen to what he has to say. But look into the eyes of Jesus. Oh, what a difference. Look into the eyes of our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us and God raised him from the dead. He lived a victorious life and he showed us that if we will let him help us, he's our redeemer. We come to him and he'll come into our life. And I'm telling you then, we can live for the Lord and work for him. And he's the author and the finisher of our faith. That's what Jesus is. The word declares that. Surely there's a work that I can do. The song says, Jesus, use me. Surely there's a work that I can do. Some people may wonder, I don't know what I can do. I'm, I'm stove up now. I've got arthritis. I've got, and I'm so sad for people who do have that. But you know, the Lord has, and he's just, I mean, we just come to him. You think, I just thought, well, who, who can we look at that? At the, just say, well, I don't have a whole lot to bring. If we all bring what we do have, it all adds up and it touches lives. I thought about the lady with the alabaster box, and they looked at her and said, well, look at her, why, the sinful life that she lives. But she had been around Jesus. She'd seen him, and she had noticed how, how faithful, how good he was, how kind and all. And she, she loved him, and she wanted to do something for him. What could she do? What in the world could it be? Oh, she had that alabaster box and this ointment, and she came. People said, look at him. Look, he's letting this woman come in. And Jesus wanted to leave her alone. What This was priceless. This was the very best that she knew. To, she was doing the best thing she knew, she knew to do. She wanted to honor Jesus. She realized he wasn't just an ordinary man. And she came and brought him out. Remember how she broke this body and all the ointment on his feet? And, and they condemned and criticized, especially Judas said, Look at this, at all of this is worth a whole lot of money, and look what she's done. She brought the best, what she wanted to do. Nobody forced her to do it. That's the, she wanted to bring him her best. She probably feel like, felt like, I'm the worst person in all of the world. But she saw something in him. She was showing her love, and she, she wanted to be like Jesus. I really believe that. And he said, You leave her alone. He said, she's anointed my body. And so what, you know, he died very shortly after that. And it was an honorable thing that she had done. And I thought about, people say, well, I don't have a whole lot of money. I couldn't bring an expensive gift like that. Well, what about the little widow that she had two mites? It wasn't even a penny. It was such a small amount. But she didn't say, well, I'm not going to give. It was what she had and she wanted to give it to Jesus. It was her living. It was her, I mean, they didn't have a big plans for uh, widows back in the day, if they didn't have a family, they usually just this might die. They might starve to death. But Jesus said to his disciples, he took them aside, and he said, look at this. When the others were casting in all of their money, they had plenty of money. Here's what, she didn't, she didn't say, I'm just going to, I'm just sit home here. I can't do anything. She didn't sit soak and sour. She didn't sit soak, soak and sour. She took what she had, and she was what she had, but she wanted to give it. It was all she had. And she gave to me. He said, she gave more than anybody else. Well, it wasn't maybe money-wise, but it was that she gave her all, and she gave with a heart of love. And I tell you, the Lord noticed it. And he said, that's what I'm seeing. Love will find a way. Love, when we love the Lord, we will find something to do. And if you look into the eyes of the old serpent, the devil, he'll be telling you, well, you don't have, you don't, and it doesn't, the Lord doesn't expect you to in any way. Uh, look how he's treated you. Been, uh, he'll tell you all kinds of lies because he's father lies. But refuse to sit, soak, and s sulk, and sour instead. Know this. When you look into the eyes of Jesus, you're looking into eyes of just full of love and acceptance of what we can do. We don't need to tell him what we can't do. Oh, what we can do. We can find something we can do for him. And... You know, we, the thing that I know, he is searching for child, his children every day. He's searching, and he's watching for somebody that will work for him. And surely it's us. But let's be the ones that say, yes, Lord, what can I do for you today? And every day, today, tomorrow, and all the rest of my days, what can I do? Each morning when we get up, Jesus, use me. The song said, please, Lord, don't refuse me. Well, I don't like that part, you know. Uh, when you come, it's almost like Jesus wouldn't, wouldn't use us. He will. And so we don't want even that attitude in our head that he can't. Jesus used me. He has a plan. He has a purpose. And we ought to be willing and glad to come to say, yes, Lord, what do you want me to do? 
we never, I say it and I keep saying it, we never age out. The Lord can, does, and will use us. And it's a wonderful thing to do. Remember Moses. He was 80 years old and they had an APB out for him. All points of bulletin. He'd kill somebody. He got as far away as he could. I mean, and the Lord just knew right where he was. And he said, say, I got a plan for you. And when he was 80, he led a whole nation out of bondage. He didn't think he could, but the Lord with him helped him. It was the biggest job he had ever had in his life, and he was trained as a youth by the Egyptian royalty. You remember the story about Moses, how he was found that, you know, the mother, uh, they was going to kill the baby boys, but she hid him in, in a little uh, little boat she had made and, uh, and had it in, you know, how that the Egyptian princess came down and how that uh, wound up that Moses' mother actually was the one that, uh, that took care of him and nursed him and she no doubt told him you're you're not an Egyptian you're a Hebrew and look what he did now and he didn't look so good like he could never do anything but so if we failed we've done wrong we come to the Lord and repent yes Jesus use me and I know you won't refuse me so we say to Jesus I refuse to sit soak soak and sour instead I'm ready to work for you and the Lord brought this word to me back, sometime back he'd given me this word that just blessed my heart so much. Ensconced. Be ensconced in his presence and his loving kindness. That word ensconced, I thought, I've never used that word. What even is it? I had to look it up. So I've loved the word ever since. And the Lord reminded me of that word again. Ensconced means established or settled in a comfortable, safe, or secret place. Oh, yes, our secret place with the Lord. And we find our, let's do our secret place of prayer. When we go in, I have a prayer room that I, I love. We have a room that was just, uh, had a few things in it and more like a storage room. And I thought, I told my husband, I said, I want a prayer room instead of the downstairs bedroom. We have company. I have to move every, out, every, everything out. So I said, here's this place here. I said, well, there's things we could move. And so we did, got it fixed up. I love maps. We've got my maps in there on the wall. and. I love, that's my secret place. And you know, that's when I walk in there, I, I, and the presence of the Lord is there. Well, he's everywhere, but that room is especially designated. You know, it's dedicated to serve the Lord and to, and to that's where I'm seeking the Lord that I can be used of him. You think about the little boy that brought five loaves and two fish. And when they said Jesus would like to use this, he didn't say, uh-uh. It's mine. He said, sure. He gave it to Jesus. What happened, George? Jesus multiplied it and fed the whole multitude. Don't you know that little boy's eyes was popping out? Wonder when he got back home and told his mom and dad what happened. But then they found out the straight. It was right. He had told the truth. I will never understand God's math. I will never understand how he does it. But if we will bring what we have, and it is, seems so small, Bring it to him and it is enough. He will take it, whatever you have in your hand, whatever you can. In fact, there's another scripture that I found, I was thinking of, and it's in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. New American Standard Bible, 1995. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. And whatever our hand finds to do, the scripture says, do it with all our might. We're doing it for Jesus. So uh, when the devil, don't look into his eye, the old devil's eyes, the serpent's eyes, but because he, all he's going to tell you is, well, and you know, you're worthless and that won't work and it's not enough and you're not like a, oh no, we don't look to him. But we look into the eyes of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's looking, you know, he's looking every day for people that will work for him. And not say, well, not me, I'm not good. And we just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, whatever you want me to do. You know what? If you say, well, what could I do? I don't know, but Jesus does. And love will find a way. And so that song, Jesus, use me. Surely there's a work that I can do. We saw with a smile. We say, Jesus, I come to you this morning. Surely there's a work that I can do. Lord, I ask you to just give me ideas and help me. And maybe there's something you're good at. You, you may be good at making chocolate chip cookies, like some people are. You may, there may be something, area you may be good at art. You may like to write notes. I, I know a lady that's in, not able to get out a lot now. She always sends cards to people. 
there's just all kinds of things. But Lord, the Lord will give you an idea. And if you have something you're thinking of, take it to the Lord. And I tell you what, he'll bless and he'll, he'll just help you with it. You know, there are some jobs, and one I think, I believe it's pilots who cannot, uh, cannot be serve as a pilot, especially like of a, of a, a you know, like a, one of your big companies. They can't fly those at, when they reach a certain age. And I remember how that one of these people had said, it's something how, when I'm this age today, I, I can fly. But I have a birthday the next day here, and I'm at that age. I was qualified the day before, but now I'm not qualified. He said, it doesn't make sense. But that's not the way it is. In the work of the Lord, we come to Jesus, and we, when he said, sure, yes, I can use you. Whatever your plan, the things are that we can do, and if we think we don't. Sometimes we, have, we, we don't see them as gifts and talents if they really are. Then others say, well, I can't do that. But Jesus can use you, and love will find a way. When you love Jesus, you're going to find a way to please him. So I love how we can honor and bless the Lord all of our lives. Our Lord loves partnering with us and is oh so willing to help us. That's what I like. He comes right along beside us and said, I will help you. We're in this together. The clock is striking um, at 12 now. And you know what? One of the day, days the clock will strike and my time will be up and yours will be up. I want to know. I want to leave out of here with joy and gladness. And I said, if I don't go into the rapture, if the Lord takes me before that, before the rapture, I want to die with a smile on my face and I want to die with my hands uplifted, praising the Lord. That's what I, I, I don't know how it's going to be, but I just, that's what I want. And I love it here that I, I like to close with this. And sometimes I forget. I always want to remember this. From Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 to J.B. Phillips' translation. For it is God who is at work within you, giving you the will and the power to achieve his purpose. I'm telling you, he has a plan, and you don't want to miss it. So every morning, Jesus, I'm up and ready to work for you. I refuse to sit, soak, and sour, and I sure won't sulk. May the Lord bless you and keep you until next time. Next Friday, the Lord willing, we'll see you. You be blessed. You have a great, great day in the Lord.